Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. Today we have the secret of the magic gourd. There's a good chance you have not heard of this film ever. Uh, there's a reason why. Because it probably has never played it in the United States. I'm assuming that you're in the United States and you're listening to my, rat, my prattle uh, here in the United States uh, and not in China. Uh, this is a very Chinese film. It's a I think it's pretty much 100% filmed there. Uh, it's a Disney film still, um, financed and everything else, but uh, it is a dubbed Chinese film. Uh, this is one of those kind of films, though, that I wonder if it's better if it's just as subtitles or if it's dubbed, because the dubbing is just so, so difficult. <laughs> so, so not good. Um, it's not that the actors are bad, it's just that it, it's... It's so obviously stilted in the way uh, they have to, they fill space uh, to fit the mouth movements of the actors. Um, even just when there's a crowd shot of children uh, looking to see what their grades are on, a, on the wall for their school groups or whatever. Uh, it's, it's hilarious to hear that just the dumbest stuff that they just say. Uh, in a cluster, and it's not like they have to, it's just, you know, they do, because there's, you know, 20 kids on the screen and somebody's got to make noise. It's just very strange. Anyway, the point of this movie is that there's a boy, uh, Raymond, who um, <laughs> is kind of lazy, and he's kind of selfish in a way. Uh, not so much so, except... When he's given the opportunity to be that way and not have any consequences, or so he thinks. Um, he hears the story of his grandmother telling his little sister about a magic gourd that grants all your wishes. No matter what, if you wanted a hundred dollies, it would give you a hundred dollies. Um, this, I guess, gets in his head, even though he pretty much walks through the room and ignores it. But uh, he goes fishing he likes to go fishing and he goes to this lake and he falls asleep which is usually your first clue that he's dreaming everything that happens after that point uh, but it might not be because apparently a magic gourd shows up like it talks it walks um it has one of the least interesting voices uh english speaking voices i've ever heard it's so, it, it kind of wants to be Jim Carrey without the personality, I guess. I don't know. He, it's, it's just, it's very by the book. Everything in this is very by the book. Because the, there is a point to this story, obviously, is that you, you got to work for what you have. And that you cannot be lazy. You cannot cheat. You cannot, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, hard-coded message meant for kids in China, who are the only ones who are really going to see this. Uh, unless you're in America and you're Chinese and you, you don't want to see a movie with, with that uh, exemplifies your culture. Um, but uh, honestly, I cannot find any American kid finding this entertaining whatsoever. It was a slog to get through. But uh, that's, okay, that's my opinion about all that. Uh, and again, it's not, I have to say this all the time, I know, but it was not made for me. You know, it's it's not, yeah, it's just not made for me. I say this about all the, the teenage girl or preteen girl movies that I, they all come of age and stuff like that. Those are not made for me either. But this one is also just not made for for me. Um, it, it's, I, I could list so many things that I found annoying about it and boring and just difficult but uh honestly uh my opinion on this doesn't really matter because it wasn't made for me to appreciate um and maybe a lot of stuff is lost in translation because obviously i don't understand chinese culture uh, as the people in this movie uh do uh i don't know uh, the significance of a magic gourd maybe this is something part of their culture like you know, not the Great Pumpkin, but the, it's the idea of like a like we would have, or Ireland would have leprechauns, 
and genies, you know, you know, we would have like in the movie Aladdin. It's basically this gourd shows up and slavishly call, calls him the boy master all the time, slavishly does whatever the kid wants. He wants fish. He gives him all the fish in the lake to choose from, and he puts a few in his bucket. And that's his only, his first glimpse at the power this guy has, or this gourd has. Um, when the gourd uh, just hears him say something, just off the cuff, like, oh man, I really love all these toys. Which one do you like the most? Well, I, I want all of them. Well, guess what happens? The kid leaves the store, and unbeknownst to him, every single toy in the store ends up following him out of the store, coming alive. And it's meant to be funny, meant to be whimsical, it's meant to, I, I guess, but it's just this, the gourd is just taking everything the kid says at face value and doing it without the kid intending. He's not like he's saying, I wish for this. He just says, I want this. And the gourd gives it to him. Um, and, you know, when it comes down to uh, doing his homework for him, helping him, you know, cheat on tests, helping him do... He ends up getting on the swim team and then helping him swim faster by attaching himself to the bottom of the boy's body and then just propelling him through the water super fast. And nobody just blinks at that. Nobody's like, oh, wow, that kid just suddenly just swam 80 miles an hour in a, in the pool. Like, all 11-year-olds can do this. You know, I don't know. Um, or at least one, even just one of them did that. You'd wonder what was going on. Okay? So anyway, yeah... <sighs> There's a whole suspension of disbelief that has to be enabled in order to this uh, for this to make any kind of sense. Um, and every adult has a very "here's a lesson you must learn" kind of dialogue. Um, none of them act like people; they just act like spouts for good messages. So it's like a it's like a one of those faith based films, but for Chinese uh, morals, it's not like they're not they're not Chinese morals. That sounds horrible. Um, it's just that uh, for the tenets of Chinese culture, and again, it, these things are not specific to any world. It's just that it's talking down to kids in the most boring and awful way and it's meant to look like it's the mask you know just this glorious cgi world because honestly there's so much cgi in this it looks like it was made in 1997 um it's like the outtakes from star wars special edition um yeah it's yeah the outtakes of the bad stuff from the star wars special edition which were pretty bad uh, there are, there's one moment where he's, the kid wants to get in the movies and he just stamps his feet. I want to go and get in the movies. And there's tickets are sold out. And so the gourd puts him in the movie. It's a dinosaur movie. And the dinosaur looks kind of good, sort of. But for the most part, everything else is just 1997. It's 25, 20, 25 year old special effects. Uh, it's just... It's like somebody just spent fourteen dollars on this movie, and uh, yeah, it's not a Disney Channel quality Disney Channel quality movie, which are it's pretty low. Uh, this is an actual, more than likely, a feature film. So yeah, I hate to be so punishing and so cruel to this movie, but like I said, it's not meant for me. But I again, I'm pretty sure, just like the other day with uh, with uh, what was that Quince. I might be the first person to ever watch this movie on on Disney Plus. I might be the last. I don't know, unless you, unless you deign to to watch this yourself to see why I did not like it at all. Um, I, yeah, man, I feel like a jerk <laughs> for being this cruel, um, and I just and I feel like I'm being horribly racist too. Um, that's not my intent. Uh, but yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, and 
China Film Production. That's the name. It's the China Film Production uh, Company uh, that made this film. Uh, but yeah, sorry. This is this isn't connecting with an audience outside of China. I'm just saying that right now. So if you take if you take the chance on watching this, it's your own fault. All right. That's that's your warning. That's all you're getting. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything redeeming. They did have a Star Wars reference in there. Um, uh, Luke, I am your fa I am your father because the at one point the Gord was wearing a, a gas mask. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's it's bad. Sorry. All right, let's pick tomorrow's. 35, way down. Can this be worse? No, it that is not possible. 35, we had 35 already, dang it. Let's see what it was. Atlantis, the Lost Empire. Man, I mean, again, I've barely got, we haven't even done... 106 barely done 160 of these things and out of 768 we still have 600 and i keep hitting the same numbers 471 471 is our winner 471 let's head back up there and see what we got Ooh, 471 we overshot it oh okay here we go this is interesting it, uh, it'll be a, uh, it's one of those Nat Geo documentaries. It might be a series. It might be a single thing. I don't know. It's probably a single thing. But we'll see. It's 471 Roving Mars. Roving Mars. Boom. All right, so we're going to watch Roving Mars uh, from Nat Geo, more than likely, on the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you tomorrow.